Yo, what is going on, everybody? Welcome back to Sports Night Series Aiden. I am Darius Adams, and that is Aiden Munson. And thank you for joining us here today as we discuss two of the biggest trades over the course of, of the NBA offseason. Aiden, the NBA season starts less than 30 days, and two big time trades have happened. Damian Lillard has been traded to the Milwaukee Bucks, and Drew Holiday has been traded to the Boston Celtics, and we will be, and we will be covering both of those trades today here in this video for the full details. If you have not heard, the Bucks received Damian Lillard from the Blazers, and the Blazers in return, they got DeAndre Ayton from the Suns, Tumani Kamara from the Suns, Drew Holiday, a 2029 first-round pick, and two first-round pick swaps with the Bucks in 2028 and 2030. The Suns received Grayson Allen, Keon Johnson, Nasir Little, and Yusuf Nurkic. And then on Sunday, we found out the news that Drew Holiday will be traded to the Boston Celtics, and the Celtics sent Malcolm Brogdon, the reigning sixth man of the year, Robert Williams, a 2024 first-round pick via the Golden State Warriors, and a 2029 unprotected first-round pick via the Celtics. In this trade, Aiden, the Dame trade was long overdue. This has been on the minds of all NBA fans for months now, and it finally happened. So let me get your thoughts on just that trade alone. Damian Lillard is now a Milwaukee Buck in this period with the two-time MVP, Giannis Antetokounmpo. Um, I have to say, it, even though I don't think it needs to be said, the Milwaukee Bucks are now the favorite out of any, every team. Um, I, I, I think that is very well known that they are now my favorite. I think that is that is well established now. I definitely think this is one of the going to be one of the best duos in the league, like I already stated. Um, I definitely feel like the Bucks are the favorite in the East now. Um, Celtics are not far behind, though. Celtics are. I will say that Celtics are not far behind. But I definitely feel that the Bucks are my favorite. I definitely think that this is this is a great trade for Dame and for the Bucks. This is for, for uh, in the short term, in the next couple three four years. But in the long term, I think that the Blazers are trying to build an organization for the future. They have Shaden Sharp. They have Anthony Simons. All right, they got DeAndre Aiden now, and then they got some first round picks. So I think they're trying to build this team for the future. It's sad to see the Dame's time in Portland is gone. It's done, and he didn't get to win a ring for Portland. But, you know, things happen, and time goes on. Yeah, and this was the best possible outcome for the Blazers to address this Dame trade. I think the combination between him and Giannis as a duo is arguably the best duo in the league. I think when it comes to duos, I think it comes with a couple of things. It comes with, you know, of course, patience. It comes with time. And it comes with like an ability to mesh and gel with each other. And we see these duels in the league. It took time with LeBron and AD. It took it took time with Kawhi and Paul George. It took time with Katie and Kyrie. And now you see here in Dallas, it took time with Kyrie and Luca over the course of the last half of last season. But I think with this duel between Giannis and Dame, these two guys are just immediately able to be compatible with each other because their play styles just complement each other so well. This is a one in four duel, and I and I think. Giannis really gives Dame something that he has never had in his career. A a guy who can stretch the floor, a guy who is young, who is willing, a guy who has championship pedigree. He had a legendary four in his like early years in Portland with 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 Lamarcus Aldridge. Now he has a more athletic, a versatile player, a guy who knows how to win an MVP. And Giannis and he's in an organization who has a desire to win now. And I do believe that we will see the Bucks in the Instagram's finals. But Aiden, based on the trade we saw here on Sunday morning, the Bucks are not the favorites to me. And I do like the starting lineup between with the Bucks. I think the starting lineup is going to be Dane, Middleton, Bobby Porters, Giannis, and Brooke Lopez. That's their starting five. But I think as far as depth is concerned, I think that is a huge, huge question mark for me. The Bucks will be a huge player. I do see them possibly taking that number one seed in the East. And I do see them in the Instagram's finals. But as of now, I don't see them as the favorites in the East. It's the Boston Celtics for me, Aiden. And what are your thoughts about the Drew Holiday trade? They the Celtics traded Marcus Smart early in the offseason. They landed Kristaps Porzingis. Now they land a guy who was on the All NBA defensive team this past year, a thirty three year old Drew Holiday. How do you feel about that? Um, I see where they were going here as a replacement for Marcus Smart and his defensive. Um, his defensive presence. I still think Marcus Smart is a better defender than Drew Holiday, but I still, but I also think that this was an amazing, this was an amazing, um, this was an amazing get for them. Um, I don't know how much longer Drew Holiday is going to be as productive as you said. 
he's what 33 34 years old now yeah 33 and i think he'll be i think he'll continue to be um serviceable for a couple more years um i don't know about chris i don't know about trading for Kristaps either Kristaps has proven year after year after year to be a highly injury prone player as injuries have slowly ruined some of the best seasons some of his peak seasons it ruined some of his seasons in dallas it ruined some of his seasons with the knicks right i don't under i understand somewhat what you're trying to get at obviously the celtics definitely need some presence some pres presence in the paint with bigs, but I don't know if this was the best move possible for your organization. I don't think the Celtics got worse, but I don't think the Celtics got significantly better. I still didn't think that they are one of the top two best teams in the Eastern Conference. Aiden, based off this trade, I do believe the Celtics are the favorites in the East, I mean, like I said earlier, but I do believe that this trade was based solely off of desperation. And the Celtics came off of, and we're going into the season, uh, after a game seven loss in the East Conference Finals versus the Heat, as we know, they went down 3 0 in that series and they came back and, you know, they lost on their home for in Boston game seven. And we all know the deal with that scenario. But I do believe with this trade, they gave up too much. Drew Holiday is 33 years old. And in the past, we've read a lot that he has, con that he has contemplated retirement after his contract, which I, do believe, I, which I do believe he has two years left on. So at the time, he'd be 35 years old and he has throwing out the idea of retirement. And I think you gave up too much. Like I mentioned, Michael Brockton was the reigning sixth man of the year. Robert Williams was probably going to be in contention for defensive player of the year. You traded two first round picks for a guy, uh, Andrew Holiday, who has more time behind him than he does in front of him. Um, I look at this team last season i think there was really one main issue and it was like the lack of maturity and although you have a lot of veterans al horford and marcus smart who was who have been on the subject for a very very long time now but i think it was a lack of accountability on the part of jason tatum and Jalen brown Jalen brown didn't play off the part neither did jason tatum throughout the course of the playoffs in that series alone and i do believe if the Celtics kept the same roster that he did last year if they kept smart if they kept brock and if they kept williams the Celtics would have still been the favorites in this conference regardless of the damn trade and i do believe this trade is unnecessary i do believe the celtics will be probably the favorites in all of the course of the nba but i do believe this trade was unnecessary aiden if the celtics do not make the finals this year or next year i do believe the stretch between 2017 2023 2024 like be the one of the biggest failures of any organization over the course of nba history you have so much talent going throughout their organization whether and as far as coaches you had nba you you had brad stevens now you have john missoula you've had isaiah thomas jason tatum Jalen brown marcus smart now you have Porzingis and drew holiday Kyrie irving Kyrie irving thank you gordon hayward so many guys going throughout the course of that organization and you cannot win a championship the only finals appearance you've had was 2022 that is unacceptable the celtics have to win now and i think they did this trade so many off of desperation we talked about the heat the heat have had so many superstars mention them on their trade request whether it was kevin durant donovan mitchell <laughs> bradley bill and now damian Lillard, and they have failed each and every single time this the heat still have jimmy Butler. they still have bam out of bio but Aiden, how do you feel about the Heat now that they have failed to yet again land another compatible superstar to go along with Bam and Jimmy? I just think that they're overvaluing their young talent. Um, I, I, I'm one of the biggest Tyler Hero fans on here, but I, I know what he is as a player. And if this was a question of, okay, we, we want Tyler Hero, some first-round picks, and maybe somebody else, then I would have definitely taken that off. Okay. Um, I I think that they also have, have put high, too high of a price tag on some of their other players as well. Okay. I, I definitely still like the Heat as a team, but I think that they need to be willing to sacrifice some things if they want to get some of these big-time players. All right. I definitely think that you need to get another big-time player to solidify yourself as a true contender again. And you know how I feel about Bam out of Bible. I don't need to get into how I feel about Bam Adebayo, but I know that you need more than him. So that's all. That's that's what I'm gonna leave that at. Yeah, I I do believe the Heat will be again players in the Eastern Conference because I think it's like 
lot of parity in that conference. And I do see them as like a top five seed in the East this year. But when it, when you go through all these players and they want to be a part of your organization, they want to be a part of your team, they see your vision, they see your plan, they see your goals, and yet you fail, then that's a, that's a front office issue. And I know Pat Rowley is one of the greatest coaches of all time, but man, out of all the superstars, you can't get one deal done, and that goes on you, man. That goes on you. You have to get those type of deals done. I don't care if it was Power Hero, Guitar Hero. I don't care if it's Jack Harlow. Anybody, you got to trade them. Anybody outside of Jimmy Butler or Bam Adebayo, they have to go, especially with those players. You had to land Dane. He wanted to be there. You had months to get that to happen. And yet you let another contender in your own conference land him. And they paired him up with one of the greatest players of all time in Giannis. That goes on Pat Riley uh for the heat eight now let's talk about the rest of the let's talk about the rest of this eastern conference picture here we talked about the heat we talked about the celtics we talked about the bucks but there are some but there are some other young teams that that want to get into the conversation of like championship contenders in the east i'm looking at teams like cleveland uh new york philadelphia uh brooklyn atlanta what do these trades, especially with Drew Holiday and Damian Lillard, mean for those teams? And for me, I'm going to have the Sixers. I think in the next couple of years, we can see Joel Embiid out of the city of Brotherly Glove. How do you feel about the rest of those teams in the East? Um, I definitely believe that this was a move to try and widen the gap between the top tier of teams and between other lower level contenders. I definitely agree with you. I definitely think that Joel Embiid might see his way out of the 76ers organization sooner or later with all the things that have been going on how they completely mishandled the, well, I, I wouldn't say completely mishandled, but how the Ben Simmons situation was handled with by the 76ers and by him himself, um, how the James Harden situation was handled, um, how many other superstars, how the Jimmy Butler situation was handled, how they've not been able to con- keep a consistent superstar around Joel Embiid to help him win and to help him dominate, right? I definitely feel that I agree with you there uh, that you can see the 76ers parting and Joel Embiid parting ways. Um, I definitely feel that there are some other teams that see themselves as contenders in this league too. Um, I don't know necessarily about the Knicks. I don't know how consist how I how I see consistently as you know if guys like R.J. Barrett and guys like Julius Randle consistently show up and put together good phenomenal seasons and All Star caliber seasons. I got to see a little bit more from some of these other other teams with talent as well. But yeah. Yeah, and I think this these two trades specifically are, are really shaking it because the the Eastern Conference Finals are already set. I mean, you might as well just print the tickets. There is no other team in this conference that can sneak into these two teams' way. There, there is no way, no opportunity, no chance at all. The West is an entirely different picture. You have so many great teams, so many great players that that can change the landscape of that conference. But as far as the East is concerned. The East Coast Finals is definitely going to be Celtics Bucks. I'm very anxious and excited to see how the NBA season unfolds this year. We're less than a month away from NBA regular season action, folks, and we will be right here on Sports Center Dear State and to cover it all for you, both NFL and, and NBA. So if you haven't already, make sure to like, subscribe, and comment down below. And also make sure to hit that post notifications for more videos and updates from our channel. Also make sure to follow us on social media as well. Uh, this has been Sports Time Darius Aiden. I am Darius Adams, and that's Aiden Munson, and we will see you on the next episode, guys. Until then, peace.